That's an awesome intro. We love it. Welcome, everybody. Check it out one more time. It's Mon It's Monday. It's only Monday. I swear to God, it's Monday. Uh, that makes it the best day of the week. And with today on Omni Bros Live, this is the best episode of the month because this is when we give out that IST gift card. And to help me with that IST gift card is the one and the only Geo is in the house, everybody, with the Iron Maiden shirt on. Sub, everybody. Welcome back to another installment here at uh, the Omnibus Collectors Network, Omnibus Live. We're live, everybody. We are live and alive. And it's going to give out a gift card today, everybody. So get ready for that fun. Surprise. We didn't announce it or anything. So get ready, folks. Also, that wasn't something else that was speaking to things that wasn't announced. Uh, this Saturday is the Patreon Campfire Omni Bros After Dark, where nice. it's it's a it's a pants optional gathering of all of our awesome friends. And that's a part of our Patreon. The link is down below. It's only five bucks a month to join in, so that you can hang out with us. We have a special little hangout, and we gather around like this, and we talk shit. We come in hot. Talk about things you can't talk about on the show. Uh, all that kind of great stuff. So definitely check out that link below on our Patreon for five bucks a month. Hang out in the campfire. Or you could just, there's a tip jar. You could throw a dollar in there and all that kind of fun stuff too. So that's always fun. Uh, speaking of things that's always fun, Gio, where yeah. is the best place to get your... Awesome omnibus collections, a super awesome, deep, deep, nasty, hardcore, beautiful discount. <laughs> that is, of course, our wonderful sponsor, InStockTrades.com, where you can get your omnibus, trade paperbacks, hardcover, manga, whatever it may be, collected edition-wise, they got you. Up to 50% off, loyalty discounts, tack on an extra 2% to that, and if you order $50 or more in said order, you get free shipping fantastic customer service and wonderful packaging at instocktrades.com yes and they are the ones sponsoring today's awesome 50 dollars gift card giveaway it's open to everybody across the entire world so international folks if you're watching live it only happens live i'm gonna say it now because we always get a bunch of emails after the show, from people going, oh, I'm entering into the contest. It's like, no, it happens here and now live on the show. Not later, not afterwards, or any of that stuff. And we don't even do the email anymore. I don't even have the email on my phone anymore because I don't have to worry about all the IST gift card emails anymore. We do it through a really cool, awesome raffle giveaway software add-on that StreamYard has that Geo hacked the internet, hacked the matrix, and figured it out. All right. So for anybody that's new here, here's what's going to happen. Type in the chat. That's all you got to do. Type in the chat. Hashtag IST gift card. That's all you got to do. Do that. <laughs> or we can do feed picks, but no. Type in IST gift card. And uh, by the end of the stream, I'll say when, uh, when, we're, when we're done with uh, previews, uh, that's the cutoff point. And you can't do more than one. You can't uh, you can't trick us and have a burner account. You only have one shot at it. Write IST gift card hashtag like everybody's doing. And at the end, we're gonna do the little giveaway tool here at Stream uh, Streamyard and select a winner. You're gonna see it live. I'm not gonna select anybody. It does it automatically. So there's uh, it's a fair shot to anybody. Uh, we're not uh, picking favorites or any of or any of that nonsense. So yeah, just type hashtag IST gift card and uh, good luck. I'm already yeah. seeing entries. We already got 20 entries. Let's go. People want that gift card. Yep. So you yep. got to comment hashtag IST gift card. All one word. That's how hashtags work for the system to recognize it and pick it up. And that. That's all you asked. You got no blood in the game. Where there's no, there's no money necessary. There's none of that funny, funky stuff. We're not going to ask you to buy any of our CBD oil and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to click on a bunch of links and ads and download an app. Nope. 
You don't have to follow anybody besides us. You should follow us if you haven't already. If you're here looking for uh, an IST gift card, you can at least give us a thank you with the sub. Share the video. Tell your friends that this is the awesome place to go to just talk and hang out and discuss omnibuses and comic books and just random stuff. I think it'll just randomly pop up sooner or later on this on this. Uh, I was going to say on this call because I, I, I live in Zoom at work uh, on this show. So keep it up, everybody. Give us that thumbs up. Give us that uh, sub if you haven't already. And uh, oh, 35 already. That's bitching. Yep. We've just started the night. So people will be popping in a little bit later. There's 69, 69 dudes, 69 people, but only 37 uh, entries. So I guess there's only half of you who come here to try and get free shit. <laughs> 75 people watching. That's awesome. Let's see if we can get the number up to 100. Let's get the number the up. Entries. Let's see if we can get the number of, of viewers to match the number of entries to match yeah. the number of thumbs up. Yeah, let's do 75 entries. Yeah. For now. Let's do, and if, if you don't like the show and you want to give us a thumb down, then you know what? Just hit that thumbs down button twice. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, just type. Hashtag or yeah, it can be if you want to. It doesn't change anything. It, it, the capitalization isn't effective or ineffective. Yeah. It just looks uh, prettier if it's uh, all capital letters. Because you're yelling, I want the IST gift card. Lazy bum, you mean I can't buy special mail enhancement pills from you guys? What kind of hustle is this? Go to our that, Patreon and give us twenty dollars for your mail enhancement dingling. That's for the pills. campfire. Yeah. So, yeah. Travis, nice. Sam, welcome, welcome. PS viewer, thank you for joining. Happy anniversary to my parents. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Happy anniversary yeah. to your parents. Mark, lots of cool people here. Lots of new faces, too. I love it. Thank you for joining. We do this again at the end of every month, by the way, on the last Monday of every month, uh, courtesy of InStockTrades.com, our cool. wonderful sponsor. Let's, uh, there's a good question here. We'll leave this all up and everybody keep going. But our friend, longtime viewer, voracious reader, is going to his first comic book convention uh, this weekend. Any tips from the pros for the best experience? That's a good question. And it's, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions as well to kind of get you the best experience. I, I hand cater these answers to your experience. But one, for sure, uh, have a game plan. Have a game plan. All right, do you want to go there for sketches? Do you want to go there for autographs? Do you want to go there for celebrity pictures? Do you want to go there uh, to oogle and ogle and take pictures of cosplay chicks or cosplay dudes? Uh, are you there to buy or are you there to sell? All right, so either way, you have to have some kind of a game plan. Uh, two, buy new shoes. Buy new autographs. shoes, autographs. All right, so we'll talk on autographs in a second. Buy new shoes uh, about a week or two early. Break them in, wear them, wear them for a while to kind of break them in. You, because most of the time these conventions uh, these days are getting better and they're laying carpet. Uh, ha ha. Uh, uh, they're getting better these days in the laying carpet. For the most part, though, it's just a giant warehouse or convention center with a hard concrete floor. So you're gonna want some comfy, comfy shoes. Don't show up in flip flops or you know, combat boots or hiking boots or heels, any of that stuff. Get some new, get some new sneakers or trainers or whatever you want to want to call them. Get some new sneakers and nice shoes. Uh, three, bring snacks and water, 100%. Uh, the snack bars at these places are usually super expensive and super gross, like food wise, like health health food wise. It's usually nachos and uh, three day old uh, donuts. Uh, maybe some beer, some pretzels, stuff like that, whatever. If you, you know, bring some food, bring some snacks, bring some water. Uh, and yeah, Mystic Lion, bring cash, baby. Cash is king if you're buying. Cash is super important. I'm going to add to this, not just con crud. You don't want to catch the Rona. So uh, get some hand sanitizer with you and some alcohol. Hand sanitizer only works uh, one or twice uh, a day, so don't do that. Uh, bring a little bottle of alcohol so you can wipe your hands. And uh, I would recommend don't 
bring Omnis to get signed because they're so heavy. Uh, maybe trades or what I would do because I'm a big fan of art prints and stuff. Maybe get a cool uh, art print or lithograph. That's what I would get signed. Yeah. That's just me. But I know a lot of people want their Omnis signed and all that stuff. And to touch on the avoid con crud, uh, also uh, avoid being a stinky jerk. So take a shower every day. Oh, soap, watch out for the smells. <laughs> soap and hot water. It's going to smell down there. Watch out. <laughs> yeah, deodorant, uh, comfy clothes, shorts, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, bring food to water, check to see if it's allowed. Uh, cons check bags and don't allow food and drink. That's Here's the thing. From my understanding, I don't know. From my understanding, I, from all the conventions I've, I've ever been to, you, you're allowed to take water, like, anywhere like you have to be able to have water some people need it for medication needs and stuff like that so water is usually for sure always a thing uh but we'll see but yeah little things like small snacks don't bring in like a giant pizza and walk around with a pizza box but you know some granola some trail mix uh just a little something like that just to kind of keep you going through 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 the day uh also backpacks uh prints um if you're gonna buy prints buy uh those those hard uh they're like top loaders for comics, but like huge for prints and posters uh, or even like a poster tube, something like that. Have a backpack that you can fit a poster tube into, things like that. You'll be good to go. If you are bringing Omnis to get signed, because you said you wanted to talk about autographs. If you want to have Omnibus signed, don't carry all of them with you at once. Okay. Don't just pack mule that. One, leave your uh, dust jackets home. Don't leave the dust, don't bring the dust jacket with you. They're just gonna get messed up in the trip somehow while you're going there, while you're at, at the con, going back home, whatever. You're guaranteed to fuck up your dust jacket. So leave the dust jackets home. Uh, to get the on me signed, bring one, maybe two with you at a time in your backpack. All right. Leave the other ones in your car or in your hotel room. Hopefully your hotel room is close or your car is close. And just just do it in like uh, in like phases, you know, get a couple signed. Take it back, grab a couple more, get those signed, take it back. It's a lot of back and forth, but you don't want to carry around like 15, 20 Omnis with you. Like you're going to kill yourself that way. <laughs> um, bring the flashpoint on me. <laughs> yeah. And have, have bring your own pins and markers. Bring your own pins and markers, like Sharpies and stuff like that. Different colors, black, silver, and like a bright color, like red or gold or, or, or something like that. Because you might just run into your favorite comic book creator Passing them by in in, in uh, the the alleys or not the alleys that sounds disgusting uh, in the aisles, you might just bump into somebody and go, "Oh, hey, dude, I love your stuff. I have your book with me. Can you sign it?" So it's not just you always having to wait in lines and at tables and and things like that. Um, so that's that's a good thing to have with you as well. And have a little extra money in case there's like a they don't charge for autographs for the most part. A lot of times they might ask for tips that they might be donating to a charity or something like that. So have a couple, of, you know, couple five bucks, couple bucks hanging around that you can, so you can do that kind of stuff. Good point. Nice. Uh, I'm just scrolling through the comments because lots of cool people here. Yeah, so totally. I am GM Gabe. Hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a great day too. Yeah. Uh, use a cool sharpie like the gold and silver ones. Yep. Yeah. Have different color sharpies because you know those Omni sometimes are white. Uh, the pages are white. Sometimes the pages are black on like those first like folds or the uh, the end papers. So have at it. Make sure you don't buy anything you can't get home easily. If you take a train, don't buy a sideshow statue. Yeah. Um, also, wait for the last moments of each day to haggle with some cool stuff. That's what I would do. If you want some cool figures and statues or some uh, cheap books. Maybe mm -hmm. haggle with the sellers at the end because they want they want to sell that stuff. They don't want to take that stuff back home to their stores. So have a game plan on these signatures. Also, find out who is going to be there, who you want to get autographs by, um, and do like a priority situation. Like if it's a huge, huge artist or, or creator that you want to be there, and there's probably going to be a line, hit them up first. Get in those big lines. And sometimes these smaller artists and writers might just have like a table somewhere and they'll be signing all day and hanging out, uh, stuff like that too. Uh, I just want to answer this real quick. Uriel is asking favorite Iron Maiden song. Now, favorite does not mean best. So before I get some hate from what I'm going to say, keep that in mind. 
my favorite Iron Maiden song is actually uh, Dance of Death because that's when that song came out. That's when I first got into Iron Maiden. So it holds a very nostalgic, uh, wholesome spot in my memory is a friend of mine and myself. We would sing that song all the time in high school and all that. So that sort of brought us into that world. But um, the honest answer would be Hollow Be Thy Name. But <laughs> favorite Iron Maiden song, I, I have a sweet spot for Dance of Death, even though I know it's not uh, one of the best or fan favorites, I guess. I don't know. That's just me. Uh, I appreciate uh, Jesus's comment, but uh, I I don't suggest getting those hand cards and carrying that around through the con. A lot of times they don't let you, and you don't, and it, it causes problems. So be careful about that. Can it break easily? Not I've, that it could break never, easily. I've never used one, so I don't know. Not that it'll break easily or anything like that, but sometimes they don't let you, uh, and it's it's you're, you're dragging a cart behind you, like a small cart, and you could bump into something. No, I've seen I've seen tables get get taken down because somebody <laughs> cut the corner like a little too too sharp. That's awesome. Yeah, I've seen I a mean, table. That's bad. It's bad, but yeah, I've seen I've seen tables get taken down. I've seen people get like uh, <laughs> get flat tires. You know, you like you hit somebody's back of their shoe and they step on it, kind of thing. Uh, I've seen people hit ankles, toes. Uh, don't be that guy. Be careful about that. Don't you know? I don't recommend hand carts. A lot of times they'll they'll turn you away. Like you can't have carts and strollers and things like that. Honestly, the best way is to just take two or three, uh, two at a time, and just cycle it through. You yeah, have well, zero reason to carry all twenty with you at one time. If you see something you want to buy, don't wait to buy it. It might be gone the next day or next hour. Yeah, and if you've got the cash and you can uh, buy it right then and there, go for it. Look at that. The chat's awesome with the help today. Look yeah, at the man. final schedule also to see the time someone may not be available. Do most artists uh, remark you for a fee? It's possible. Uh, those remarks, sometimes they'll do it for free. It depends. It depends on the person. So don't expect a remark for free. Never expect anything for free from these folks these days, especially something like art. Uh, like Kevin Eastman, he will always, his autograph is basically his name and a little turtle remark. So you, you usually get that for free. Um, Omnis, a lot of times though, if you bring an Omni, it's $150, $120, $100 giant book. They're usually a little bit more appreciative and they will sometimes do a remark in it, but don't expect it. Don't expect it. Uh, no. Come on, James. Do you want to kill this stream? Jesus. Uh, just take the duct tape and tape the Omnis around your waist to make it easier to walk around. That's like uh, some high-level training right there. Yeah, man. That's like uh, oh, those yeah. weight vests. Yeah. Do you guys prefer Omnis or Epics? I've never owned an Epic in my life. Uh, just for whatever reason, I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to say I, Omnis. Omnibus. I, I've been leaning. I got a bunch of Omnis you can see behind me, but I'm leaning. Yeah, you can't see my, my Epic shelves, but my Epic shelves are getting a little bit more these days. A little bit more action. Uh, they're a little bit uh, easier to read and hold. You know, Omni is a little hard to read in, in, like, in your bed or on your couch or something that you kind of almost have to read them on on the table. Uh, but Epics are a little bit cheaper. Uh, they're, they're the same size almost as like a regular comic. So it's like you've got like a stack of regular size comics. It's all good stuff. I'll talk a little bit more about Epics later. Hint, hint. Wink, wink. Nod, nod. Uh, this is important too. Ask for permission for us to take pictures of the pretty cosplayers, or even not pretty ones, and even not the yeah. <laughs> uh, so something happened with the giveaway tool. Uh oh, everybody, I don't know why, but it went back in entries. I had like 50. And now it's down to 30. I don't know what happened. So if do it again. Do it again. Type it again to see what happened. I have no idea what went wrong there uh, to see if it goes up. So if you can do uh, this, you can type hashtag IST gift card again. 
Yeah, people. Were that might have been it. Maybe people did it too many times and they took it away because it's 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 built to not let you rig it by having fifty entries. But do it again, anyways, just to see what the hell happens. Because I, that I, I'm still trying to figure it out. That's why I'm looking off to the side here. We're up close to forty, so let's see what happens. We got close yeah. to hundred people. Only do it uh, once. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. I'm not gonna highlight well, you guys again because because no. James is right. Sing the freaking song. Come on, man. No, that's some that's some super chat level thing. And even then, it's like like a twenty dollars super chat. I'm not gonna. Yeah, say it. it'll take it'll probably take down the whole stream. Uh, yeah. So Lazy Bum bought a, a Conan on me. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, it's all good. He and he uh, he doesn't know if he wants to go with Epics or not because he hasn't held one yet for sure. If, if you're thinking about honestly, like this is coming from somebody that's been collecting Omni since the beginning. They are. They do get a little strenuous and difficult to read. It's just flat out there. That's the one major downside to, to these things. If you're looking to be able to read it, it's like I read my books in my car, at work, on my lunch break, because I'm a weirdo like that, or in my bed. Uh, it's hard to do that with an Omni. But if you're looking for readability sake, uh, Epic's, Epic's are a little bit easier to read. But if you're looking for like beautiful, oversized art, uh, you can't really go wrong. Or, or if you're really super particular about spines matching and having some kind of uh, uh, unity to them, uh, epics are, are are that for you. Like all the spines basically line up and match, and they're more or less the same for the most part. Uh, shoot, Gary asked me something. Gary, I'm sorry, I can't see the freaking comment right now. What the hell? Uh, but you were asking about, oh, here it is. What, what do I think about the new song by Maiden? Uh, I need to give it uh, another listen or two because uh, I thought it was fine. Uh, but maybe if I start listening to it more, I'll be like, oh, I really love it. But right now it's like, yeah, it's cool. I dig it. I like his picture there with, uh, with Twisted. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, Gio, here's a good question from Gabriel. Uh, what's the biggest con you've been to, Gio? <laughs> There's not a whole lot to choose from down here. Uh, I, I will say hmm, there was a convention, and it, you couldn't even call it a convention. It was like a, gather, a small gathering of nerds. But for some reason, the vendors were awesome, even though they'd had no guests. It was just people buying stuff. Um, but it's, it's just one thing, and it's just the Puerto Rico Comic Con thingamajig. But I haven't gone to one in ages. Uh, I go to San Diego every year. I've gone to San Diego for the, since like 2002. I think I might have maybe missed one or two in that time frame. Uh, I've gone as a uh, as a regular attendee. I've gone as press. I've gone as an exhibitor, like when I was with Torpedo. I've gone, you know, I worked at the booths and I've sold and I, you know, all, all that stuff. I've been there. So that's like the biggest one in the country. Uh, when I think the biggest, one of the biggest ones in the world is San Diego Comic Con. I, I guess I've gone to that one like 20, like since 2000 and 2002. So almost the last 20 years I've gone. Not counting these last two years where COVID, you know, took it away. But yeah, I've gone to, geez, uh, it's, it's not even my favorite show, honestly. San Diego is not my favorite comic book show. It's not much of a comic book show anymore. But the nightlife for San Diego is the best reason to go. After the convention, everybody, awesome. everybody spills out directly across the street. Like you just, you just cross the street over and it's all bars and restaurants. Uh, it's awesome. The afterlife for San Diego Comic Con is the best at the Gasland District. I've been to conventions all over the country, and that's the best nightlife for sure is San Diego. Nice. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, I think I'm the only one. You started backwards. Started with Epics and changed to Omni. That works. Uh, you, you, now you know the both experiences. That's a lot of people do that. I think all the spines don't go there. All the spines. <laughs> people are getting some uh, withdrawal symptoms with those. Yeah, spines. people people really hurt over the spine. I, 
I mean, I could I could make an argument for the font being too tiny, but but that's just nitpicking, really. I'm comfortable with whatever. That's just me. I know a lot of people get offended for some reason. Here's a good question for, uh, for Sam. I am Geo. Oh, that's not it. That's another gift card entry. Thank you. Uh, for someone getting into manga, manga, what's a good place to start? Get uh, if you have the cash and you're willing to uh, buckle down and get uh, Shonen Jump material. Uh, My Hero Academia is a great way to start. Hunter X Hunter or Hunter Hunter. Uh, One Piece is always the right answer. But those are lengthy series. My Hero Academia so far has got close to 30 books. Hunter Hunter has 34, I think. One Piece has like a million. Um, but you got to start not, with you got to start with Dick Punch Island. No, oh, come on. That was called <laughs> Dick Punch terrible. Island. Um, it's funny though, but it's terrible. Uh, I, some I would recommend some standalone stuff. Uh, Rumiko Takahashi, even though she has great series, and they're not too long where you can invest time in. in. Uh, Mermaid Saga, uh, Maze on Ikoku, uh, Planets is a great manga. It's from the same creator as Vinland Saga. Uh, Vinland Saga is another great manga to start with. Uh, really top tier artwork with Vikings and, and all that stuff. Um, if you want Nazi killing zombie ghoulish fun, uh, Helsing is always a great uh, fun book. It's only three deluxe editions, hardcovers. Um, what else can I recommend? Uh, Inyo Asano I don't like to recommend because some heavy subject matter. Not not everybody's willing to go down that route. Uh, Junji Ito, if you like horror stuff, most of the books are well, all the books are standalone. You can grab any of them. Akira. Uh, the problem with Akira is that a lot of people will recommend the box set, and not everybody has the cash to buy a huge box set right away. So if you don't mind getting the soft cover editions, even though they're not laid out the same i get that uh what else do i have here b stars is a fantastic series that i recommend i made a video on it if you want to check it out on my channel um yeah stuff like that so i would say to summarize uh, uzumaki from uh, jinji ito one piece uh i do recommend either the box sets or the omnibus editions the three and ones. Uh, Eternity. I didn't mention it, but I'll talk about it now. This is what I've been reading, and I'm making a a, a video on it on my channel. So Eternity is a fabulous series that I highly recommend. And uh, planets, get planets. I think it's a lot like 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 with comic books, where it's like, hey, what do you like? Get into that. You know, because for manga, there's a little bit of everything. There's cooking, there's sports, there's weightlifting. There's, there's, ev- yeah, there's everything. There's uh, um, there's love. There's you know all that stuff. So, uh, mm, lazy uh, bum started reading Parasite, and it's interesting. I've only watched the anime for Parasite, and I really uh, enjoyed it. I do recommend it. Uh, PS Viewer, what is the best convention? I've only sneaked into Gen Con, uh, the AVN Awards. No. Uh, for me, again, is this what, it depends on what you're going to conventions for. Okay, I go to conventions because I like to buy comics, sell comics there, uh, meet creators. Comics, 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 comics. Okay, that's why... San Diego has been a little bit different. And San Diego's great. I've, I've done the whole thing at San Diego where it's, uh, I've done the celebrity thing. I've done the Hall H thing. Like I've, you know, waited hours and hours and hours in line for Hall H and all that kind of stuff. But I like comic books. I like to go talk to vendors, dig in dollar bins, wheel and deal, buy bulks and get discounts, all that kind of stuff. I like to do the comic book thing. Uh, and my favorite ones for that has been, uh, the Las Vegas, the amazing Las Vegas show, uh, WonderCon, and C two E two. Those are my favorites for for that kind of stuff. And then Gabriel asks, "Do you have any recommendations for San Diego Comic Con? For example, finding a hotel 
or any other tip for that con. You, here's what I do, and here's what I would recommend. It's up to you, but this is what I like to do. I like to get a bunch of buddies and get a hotel room at the Marriott, which is the hotel directly connected to the convention center. There's very little walking to get to your hotel room and to the convention, all right? There's nothing better than taking a dump in your own uh, uh, hotel bathroom and not having to use the bathroom at the convention center. It's worth it to go walk to your bathroom or walk to your room, drop off all the stuff that you bought and take a nice poop. Um, you can take a shower, all that kind of stuff and you're right there at the convention center. It's the same place for most of the creators and celebrities stay too. So I ran into like Stan Lee, I ran into uh, George Perez, I ran into Jeff Johns at the bar, Jim Lee at the bar, uh, I ran into uh, directors and actors at the bar, just kind of crisscrossing through it, so it's really cool. But it's pricey, okay? It's pricey. I'm talking like two to $3,000 for the week for that hotel room. So if you get a couple of buddies or, you know, if, uh, it used to be me, my wife, my friend, and his wife. And we would just split everything. That's the absolute best way to do it. Other than that, um, if you want to go a little bit cheaper, the other best way to do it is find a hotel near the uh, that somewhere along the uh, the trolley. There's a trolley that runs all the way through San Diego, right next to the convention center, all that stuff. Get a room by the trolley and just take the trolley back and forth. That's your best bet. Or you can even park a little bit way. It's called Hotel Circle. Look up Hotel Circle. It's a little bit out the way, uh, but you're going to pay less for it. And you can just drive and park where the cruise ships are and walk to the convention center. You pay like five bucks a day for parking and you walk about a mile to the convention center. Uh, that's what I used to do. I've done all, 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 all of those before. Those have been all the different ways I've done it. My favorite is the Marriott, but three thousand dollars for a hotel room is a little much, even if you're splitting it with a bunch of fools. Uh, but you can go to Hotel Circle, drive in, park at the uh, the cruise ships, and walk your way in. It's it's nice. It's San Diego. It's nice weather. You can walk it. No big deal. Boom. That was fun. I miss conventions so much. Sandy, uh, Topiro Con was this past weekend, and I didn't get a chance to go. I was in, I was in California. I was at the beach, uh, but I, didn't, I wasn't able to make it to Hollywood for the convention. It was just a quick weekend trip at the beach. Um, Benjamin Geo, president of Kadokawa, suggesting they need to censor their anime manga for the West because Google, Apple won't review. Here. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I would hate that to happen, honestly. I don't think it will, but it has the potential for it to occur, and that would suck. But I don't think it'll happen. Just my hunch. People really want us to review the damn Dick Fight Island. Jesus. <laughs> I, I'll tell you what. Give me, give me about a month. And I'll get to it because I have a million other things that I'm doing right now. Uh, so I'll, I'll I'll read it for this for a Monday show. Uh, sometime in August, I'll talk about it. How about that? <laughs> uh, thank you. I imagine you would have to make a reservation with anticipation for that. Uh, a little bit. So Hotel Circle, you don't have to worry too much about it. Um, there is a lottery system for all the nearby conventions or the nearby uh Hotels near the convention center is a lottery system. It sucks. Uh, and you have to book it like way, 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 way in advance. Uh, that's why I do the hotel circle, but don't wait to the last minute. Like you still want to commit to it and you still want to <laughs> 60 entries. Sweet. Um, you still want to put that reservation in early and get there, you know, get it that way because the hotel room is everything. Honestly. You don't even need to go to the convention. You can just get a hotel room and, like I said, party afterwards. You'll see all your favorite convention, all your favorite creators spill out into the bars and the restaurants and all that kind of stuff. It's it's way cool that way to see them in kind of their natural element, like in real life situations. It's cool. 
Yeah. Uh, so you do want to book your hotel early if you don't get it, if you don't get a ticket, because the ticket's even harder to get. You have to be grandfathered in to get the tickets. I'm not sure how they're going to do it these days. So they're going to change it up with these last two years of it being nixed because of uh, COVID or if they're just going to still grandfather you in. So you have to be able to make it in first with something weird like maybe like one uh, Saturday or a Sunday ticket one year and then next year you can go in and get an all week pass but it's still a lottery system it's really just it's, it is what it is it's just how they do it you know there's really no no ways around it uh so getting the tickets is the difficult part the hotels like i said hotel circle places like that you kind of wait a little bit but you still want to get that in as soon as possible yes uh, gabe and gia would you buy a ren and stimpy omnibus oh yeah i'd buy it uh, i'd think about it but I'd rather nice. be like an epic or a complete collection, to be honest. But I would, yeah. I would buy a collection of Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, Is there sure. enough material for an omnibus? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's. God, I want to say it's like forty issues. I'm going to look it up. I might be totally okay. thinking of something else. I can see that because I know Alf was like seventy issues or something like that. I hate Alf, just so everybody knows. But I <laughs> want an Alf omnibus just so people can shut up about it and just the amazement that it exists. You, you know, like that chaotic goodness, I want that to come to fruition. I want it to happen. There so was if Alf can happen, then yeah, Ren and Stimpy, let's go. There was 40, there's 44 issues of Ren and Stimpy. So totally enough for an Omni or a couple of epics. Red DFI. We found it pretty tamed, contrary to what the jacket sells. What is DFI? Dick Fight Island. Oh, Dick Fight Island. It's Dick Fight, not Dick Punch. I'm sorry. It's just the whole idea of the story with punching dicks. Gotcha. What do you guys think of the idea of Michael B. Jordan doing a Val Zod Superman series for HBO Max? I like it better than a race swap Superman. J.J. Abrams is doing possibly. I'm excited. Uh, I love Earth 2 New 52. That was awesome. That's one of my favorites from New 52. So I'm excited. Yeah. It's, hey, it's, let's just see what happens. It, let them experiment more with Superman. Uh, the, the DC movies have, they've been good, but they're not gathering like the fan fervor and excitement as the Marvel films had. I mean, there's no arguing about that. There's no hate. I love it all. Uh, but the Marvel ones have definitely been grabbing fans and just shaking you, shaking you like a rattle, and really getting people really deep and involved. That, those those movies have turned people into comic book geeks more than anything else has ever had. So so they need to experiment and do and think outside the box a little bit. Uh, I'm all for it. Lazy bum, do you want to win that gift card? <laughs> Geo's a closeted Alf stand. Oh, next con I go to, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Lazy bump. Uh, next con I go to, I'm going to look for that ALF seal cover. Yes. I get want it, that bad. Get it and, and grade it and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I've been looking at graded copies. They're not They're not cheap. They're like like a 9.2, which is like a near mint minus, is still like 600 bucks. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let us reverse engineer this. Ren and Stimpy and ALF omnibus idea. What is an omnibus that should not exist? That's a good question. I don't like the Omnis, and I would wish they would stop doing them, where it's like, here's a creator's greatest works. Here or like the is... one-shots of a yeah. series. Yeah. Or here is uh, like a Loki omnibus, but it's just all these random appearances of Loki where there's no like linear narrative or story or arc or, or anything like that. Yeah. Happy birthday. Outside of that, do it for everything else. Do freaking Thundercats and Cops and Alf and whatever it is. I don't care. That's fine. I, I But I don't like the ones that are just random issues just kind of thrown together. Like the 90s one they did or and I love 90s, but it's just random first appearances of the 90s. Like, ugh, who cares? Because uh, you're just double dipping in other Omnis anyways. Or ones that are just like, here's just random issues of a hero or of a character. Yeah, sampler Omnis. Yeah. Like that, uh, 
the 90s omni where you just had like the first appearances of famous characters from the 90s i'm like who wants that really yeah no on the book of doom omni gabe i don't know what that is the, uh doom's getting an omnibus is it just all of his random appearances i think random appearances but it does have that uh brubaker book that is out of print am i getting that right uh What's it called? Is it Brubaker? I, I'm not too sure. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Okay, yeah, I, I, I pulled it up on Amazon. Uh, Books of Doom, the one that's really expensive, uh, the hardcover trade or whatever. That's going to be on there. So that's reason enough to get it. I don't care about the earlier appearances because uh, you can get that through other means, but cool. Yeah, I mean, isn't there a trade paperback of that, Books of Doom? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 but it's. Condensed. I think it's out of print. It should be because I don't have it, and I'm a Doom fan. Wait, 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 wait. Mystic Lion, Mystic Lion, Gargoyles. Oh, you need a Gargoyles box. I think said I need that Gargoyles. Box. Gargoyles DVD box. I have all the DVDs. They're fairly. They they used to be. I don't know about now, but they used to be fairly inexpensive. Other than the last season, the third season, I think it is. Because uh, it's broken up as it's season one, season two, season two, part two, and then season three. And season three was only available through like a Disney movie club or something like that. That sucks. Uh, sold listings on eBay says $50 uh, minimum for that trade paperback. <laughs> The hardcover is 121 bucks. The hardcover, right? yeah, the hardcover is in the 130s, 150s. DVD, what's that? <laughs> it's almost like a VHS tape. But round. But a laser disc. Yeah. Lost technology from the late 90s. You know what, oh, you, know, and, you know what I really uh, want to do? I want to buy sealed fucking VHSs. That is cool. Like... They're great display items, by the way. If you I, put them on I, a shelf, I yeah. want a TMNT, the first Ninja Turtle movie, it's sealed. I, I've looked them up on eBay; they're a little pricey, but man, I'm tempted. Uh, Taylor talks comics. Thank you for joining. How do we enter for the gift card? You just type in the chat hashtag IST gift card, and you're in the running. We're gonna pick a winner at the end of the stream. <laughs> Circular VHS. How much is the the VHS for TMNT? Uh, hundred and sixty to three hundred bucks. Damn, because it's sealed. Yeah. Wow, I did not know that VHS. But you get that thing open for like a dollar. <laughs> but if you want it sealed, it's like three hundred bucks. I mean, you could buy it opened and reseal it yourself. Ah, you that's not the same. That's not. I, the same. I know, I know, but that's like buying an Omni. With the wrong yeah, dust jacket, someone, yeah. getting a dust jacket like reprint. Like, How can you tell if it's resealed or not? The it depends. Uh, you would have to look up a picture of a factory sealed copy to determine because a lot of people like to scam yeah. and reseal stuff and sell it that way, like it's factory sealed. So watch out. Uh, I, I miss. Uh, I didn't mention this earlier, but. Triumph and Torment is also on the Omnibus. Oh, so that Doctor Doom or the Doctor Strange, yeah. Doctor Doom story? That one's great. So you got two stories that are worth it, in my opinion. Uh, Gabe, are you still in the video game collecting bits? A little bit. Not so much right now. I mean, I did recently get the Maximum Carnage. I showed this off like about a month ago. But it is it has gotten crazy. Like, like graded, graded sealed stuff is... Yep. It's out of control. It's you're buying a house. It's it's really crazy and interesting to see that kind of happen. But it's, I'm still into it. I still want to get the games I want. Uh, I, I don't need you know sealed. I would like complete in box, which is like game cartridge or cartridge box and instruction manual. But I'm okay with just cartridge for a lot of things. Uh, Benjamin Wyatt, thank you for the super, super chat. chat. What? Uh, did we do the fries? I'm about to. I'm bringing it up right now. Fries are also could do that milkshake one, Jeff or Geo. I, 
Uh, I'm scared. Oh, shit. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Enjoy some fries and thank you, Benjamin, for the super chat. Gabe, what's a 90s comic outside of the big two that was surprisingly awesome, uh, i.e. from a video game or a franchise or a cartoon, etc.? cetera? Uh, off the top of my head, Gargoyles. We were just talking about Gargoyles earlier, the DVD set. The, the, the uh, comic book is awesome. It's uh, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor doing it. Issue number one is a Joe Madera cover, Joe, Joe Madera cover that's embossed. Wow. I, might, I might have it here somewhere. Give me a second. But that's cool. Um, Street Sharks uh, has a really cool one, too. Jesus wants a Selma gift. I got you. I got you, brother. Uh, uh, what do we have here? Let's do From Dust Till Dawn. That's a fan favorite, right, on this channel? <laughs> yes. Just for you, Jesus. And for everybody else. <laughs> That's for everybody. Thank you, Benjamin, for the super chat. All right. So I found them. I had them right here. I knew I did. <laughs> Gargoyles. Brown. I'm sorry, Gabe. Uh, was it? Brown. Keep on doing you, man. I love it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at some Gargoyles comics. Look at this number one Joe Madura cover. That is awesome. I've never seen that. Yeah, I have the whole set, dude. These things, I got these for nothing because I love Gargoyles so much. Um, but now they're getting super expensive. Everything '90s, like like flashback, you know, like throwback stuff, is really getting getting crazy. Town. Is there enough to get an omnibus? There's 12 issues, so maybe like a complete collection or oversized hardcover, Ooh, something like that. Nice. Maybe if we get a revival of Gargoyles. Marvel could be like, oh, let's put out a trade paperback. Well, I don't know if they have. Well, they, they, I would assume they have a license now. They're owned by Marvel, uh, so that'd be great. I think there is going to be a revival of Gargoyles. I could feel it in my bones, especially with them releasing those NECA doing those awesome toys. Yep. Like I am serious. Like I really feel like there's going to be a resurgence of Gargoyles pretty soon. They could put it up on Disney Plus. Yep, it would do well. Do so you have all 12 issues? I have all 12, yeah. Nice. Bad Jesus. I just ate tacos, but I'm craving fries all of a sudden. Also, shout out to my buddy James here. Dying to know what is the source or origin of that fries titties gif. <laughs> I just I just found it one day and put it in our, our little uh, like column of like videos and gifts to uh to put up. Yeah, I have just, no idea who that is. So and yeah. just decided like hey. Uh, why not have a cool super chat video? I've seen other channels that had like cool super chat videos that like, you give them a super chat and they throw up some funny video. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna throw up this hot chick. My oh, man. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those I'm are the gargoyles. Your boom, have any license for gargoyles? Maybe. I would want Disney to do it. They, there was another one that came out. I have it here somewhere. Like issue one it might be in a different box. Uh, that Slave Labor Graphics did, which is apparently uh, a continuation of the series. Like, it's done by uh, Greg Reisman, who was the uh, the original, like, showrunner and writer for the cartoon series. And he so he did that comic book series. I had the number one here somewhere. I don't know if it's in this box or a different box. Uh, but that one's also awesome and a little pricey, too. All the Disney stuff, like I don't have them, but I got like the newer, like Darkwing Duck, but the Darkwing Duck stuff is cool too. Uh, was the Gargo series meant to be only 12 issues or was it canceled? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was canceled. And who is the artist for the Gargo's comic? It's a, I think it's, it's, oh, let me take a look. I, like I said, the coverage were Pim Palmiotti and Amanda Connor. And I think they did the inside art too. Where did I put those things? And Death Rattle is the Fry Girl's boyfriend, apparently. Uh, I I follow her on different social media platforms, and I don't think you are. <laughs> Amanda Connor. Amanda Connor was the uh, artist on these. Nice. Or at least for issue Watch. one that I'm looking at. 
Watching Gargoyles as an adult is much more satisfying than watching it when I was a kid. That gun episode where uh, Brooklyn? No, not Brooklyn. Bronx, Bronx, Bronx. No, Bronx is the dog. Who's that big fat dude? Um, the one where he gets a gun on accident and shoots uh, uh, and shoots somebody. I don't want to spoil anything. That, that hits a lot different when you're an, an adult. I mean, it was meant to be like an anti-gun like or like a gun safety awareness thing, but it's really different these days. Derek says, "And man, it was canceled. It was part of Marvel's downsizing in '95, '96." Yeah, yeah those things are pricey. Hope, Somebody said he looked them up, and they're they're gnarly. So, so be careful <laughs> trying to find those things. You, you you guys are really committed to following Fry Girl. How do we follow Fry Girls on social media? What's the handle? Uh, my secret. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. There you go. Just for you, Sassmurf. Um, NFL dude, we need a comic reboot for Darkwing Duck written by Warren Spector. He wanted to do a video game after he created Epic Mickey. That'd be fun. Thank you for everybody that's uh, entering on the... Uh, on the giveaway, we're up to 78 uh, entries. Let's see if we can get to 80. So we've mostly been talking with the chat, but did you haul or read anything, Gabe? Oh, I probably forgot that we do that still. Uh, right. <laughs> Give me a second here. <laughs> Gabe, the unsung here with the handle. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, not so much. I try. I try, James. Thank you, Gabe. All right. Uh, halls. Okay. Uh, all right. So speaking one entries. Thank you, everybody. Nice. Good job, guys. Somebody's going to get it. You can't win if you don't enter. It costs you nothing to do it, and you're totally in the running for a free $50 on IST. That's easily an omnibus. Yep. Oh, okay. So speaking of Epic Collections, uh, part of my haul is the uh, stupid light. Let me see. Like, maybe it's too bright. I don't know. Anyways, oh here we go. That's it's better. fine. We, uh, it looks it looks good. I got the uh, Generation X, the awesome. Nice. Speaking of ninety stuff too, Generation X Epic Collection that came out last week. Uh, this is great. It, it's it's been this series came out like over twenty five years ago. Marvel seemed to have totally forgot about uh, Generation X for a while, but we got ourselves <laughs> thanks to all the nineties epics that have been coming out and selling like crazy thanks to that Venom one. You'll be getting more 90s uh, epic collections. And for those of you who were kind of thinking about epics, this is, I'm going to kind of show you guys the spine, the front, it's a great the back battle. of these. Yeah, this is great. This is uh, volume one, of course. It's Uncanny X-Men 316 through 318, which is part of the Phalex Covenant stuff. Uh, nothing to do with Gen 13. There's a little bit of a story behind that, actually. Uh, Generation X through 1 through 9, Wolverine 94, Generation X Collector's Preview, Generation X uh, Ash Can Edition. I love this series. This is Chris Hollow. It's Joe Mad. Joe Mad does the first couple issues because it, it was during his run in Uncanny. So 316, 317, 318 is Joe Mad. And then you jump right on over into... Good old Chris Bahalo stuff in here. And this is early Chris Bahalo where his uh, his style is still kind of there. If you like the Chris Bahalo kind of noodling, deep detail, kind of craziness, uh, it's you can see it sparking here a little bit. Um, his storytelling is some of the best. Here he is at cutting his teeth. Great characters, a lot of first appearances. A lot of just great stories, interesting concepts, 
everything about this book. This is such an underappreciated series. I don't know why it took anybody so long to even come up with putting a nice uh, collection of this out. There was even a TV movie at one point that you could find on YouTube, which is kind of eh, but it was cool for what it was. Um, just great, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Scott Liddell doing some amazing work in here. You have, uh, it's kind of, this is the re-imaging of White Queen because White Queen's the, uh, like the head mistress here along with uh, Sean Cassidy. They're, they got their own kind of like subsect of Young Mutants, uh, kind of like New Mutant style. But these are characters that have a lot of like, they're not beautiful, awesome, heroic, stoic characters like you do with all the X-Men characters that come through for the most part. You get characters like Chamber, who uh, Jonathan Starsmore, I think his name is, where the first time he used his power, it blew off his face and his chest. Uh, you have Skin, who I love Skin because this was the first Hispanic character I ever knew growing up as a kid. Nice. But he had... But he's ugly. He's like he's got just like loose, nasty skin that he uses like not quite like Mr. Fantastic where his body stretches, but it's just his skin, just loose, wobbly skin that he kind of like shoots out and it's like his face is all he's a teenager, he looks all old because his skin's all loose. That's awesome and gross at the same time. Yeah. And then it also it's the nineties and it falls into that good old Hispanic stereotype that he was a gangbanger and he even had a friend who was paralyzed. He's got shot in a drive-by <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that, you know. Um, Jubilee's on the team. You have Sink, who's an African-American guy who can copy anybody's powers. Uh, and he ends up being, like, one of the strongest mutants of all time. Really awesome stuff. It doesn't have the uh, Age of Apocalypse stuff in here. Because this went like one, two, three issues, I want to say, and then Age of Apocalypse happened, and then they had that really awesome three issue series through there. But great characters. You have M in here, uh, uh, who is like a combination. It's weird. I think the story is a combination of two girls in one, and one of them is an autistic girl who can't speak, and the other one is like her sister and like her protector. Weird stuff. I think I kind of got oddly re rewritten out or, or, or whatever, but interesting, cool stuff there. Uh, husk, another one who has gross, nasty powers, where like the husk of a of a corn, where you just rip her. She has to like, kind of rip her skin off, and she has like, you know, she could turn into like rock or steel underneath. Really neat, cool stuff under there. So great series, great characters, just all around, just exciting. Great, great series, and it's nice to have it in a uh, a complete epic collection like this. Uh, outside of that, some more '90s goodness. Uh, you can't go wrong with a CGC 9.8 of Wolverine 75. I have the X-Men 25, which is where Wolverine gets his uh, adamantium pulled out of his body by Magneto. Uh, Wolverine 75 is the next issue right after that with the aftermath of that trauma, and he pops the bone claws for the first time. He's got a cool Wolverine hologram on it, too. Uh, yeah, so I got matching – well, not matching 9.8s. I got two 9.8s. Uh, my – my X-Men 25 is signed. This one isn't signed yet. I'll, I'll get that to happen sooner or later. But this and X-Men 25 is literally the one-two punch, kick your ass uh, comic book storyline of the X-Men in the 90s. You can't beat. This is pinnacle, pinnacle stuff here. 1,000%. Uh, so there you go. Love it, love it, love it. That's my haul, Gio. That's my haul. Two awesome, uh, cool 90s items for my collection nice i wonder why marvel doesn't have any gen x issues after issue 10 available digitally on marvel unlimited with the exception of the crossover issues hmm that is interesting oh and true announcements thank you i mean not me but for gabe <laughs> gotta check you out on whatnot <laughs> yeah so follow me on whatnot uh i'm under matrix gabe right now but i'm in the process of rebranding myself as ninja comics because ninjas make everything better and you can do a lot of cool branding stuff with ninjas. You know, I can have like cool ninja backgrounds. I could dress up as a ninja. There's nothing cooler. It literally, ninjas make everything better, Geo. You can't think of anything that a ninja cannot improve. Like something boring like golf. But imagine ninjas playing golf. Awesome. NASCAR, and they're throwing ninja stars at each other at the tires. We're trying to slash each other with, <laughs> with katana swords. 
Uh, yeah. Everybody, everybody likes turtles, but you know it's cooler than turtles, Ninja Turtles. No, good All point. Right? Uh, Daredevil was absolute garbage until Frank Miller came in and introduced ninjas. Hand ninjas. The hand, Electra, uh, all that stuff. Ninjas. Uh, who's the coolest G.I. Joe? The fucking ninja. He's got a movie now. Yeah. That's all That's all scientifically proven, everybody. Uh, so I'll be, I'm, I'm going to be, right now it's Matrix Gabe. I have some sales out there that I have to wait to get processed through, like sold and confirmed and authenticated then i'm gonna switch myself over to ninja comics so that's what you want to do you want to follow me on whatnot yeah wolverine wolverine's cool but when they put in that ninja samurai part of them even cooler same with batman in the league of shadows uh but yeah i'll probably be selling some omnis on there pretty soon i actually kind of want to downsize the omnis so if you guys see anything you can just hit me up on instagram or hit me up here wherever Facebook, wherever, and we can make some deals on almost all these zombies. Almost. There's so, some stuff here that's... I need to keep the stuff that needs to be archival. Like, I have stuff that's autographed and sketched in. That's not going to go anywhere. No, yeah, you keep those. But, like, you know, some of that other stuff can go. Most of that stuff can go. So, if you're looking for Omnis, like, I'm talking, like, cover price or cheaper, for the most part, let me know. I don't know what that is, but cool. Space Jam. I saw that movie. I made it like 30 minutes in. I'm like, nope. Nope. I'm not a fan not of, fun. of the Snake Eyes trailer movie looks badass if it wasn't called Snake Eyes. Like it's it's, mm, it's not yeah. Snake Eyes that I know in the cartoon or the comic books. Like totally, totally different. Yeah. What's on the do not sell list? Uh Frank Miller's Daredevil. Uh the Amazing Spider-Man Volume Three and the uh, David McLean Tom McFarlane because they're signed. Like the Amazing Spider-Man Volume Four, that's signed by Jerry Conway and Roy Thomas. Like, come on, like that's awesome. I mean, I'll, I'd be willing to sell it for for some real money. Like I'm talking real money. Uh, Deadpool by Joe Mad. All the Daredevil stuff, honestly, that's the. The Fantastic Four stuff can all go, or at least like the uh, the Kirby, the Kirby uh, Stan Lee stuff. Um, the John Byrne stuff can go. I'm gonna keep the Mark Wade. Uh, the Hulk stuff can go. If any Gauntlet's gonna have to stay. Uh, Thunderbolts is gonna have to stay. Amazing Spider-Man can stay. Uncanny X-Force can stay. X Force will have to stay, uh, and basically anything else back there. Like, just do it. All the DC stuff can go besides the absolutes. Most of those absolutes are going to stay, but all those DC armies can go besides the Green Lantern stuff. Keep keep the vertical stuff, especially yeah. No, all, all the all the all the hard all the, like the oversized hardcover stuff. That's basically going to stay. Yeah, I mean, if you want like the. Uh, what you call it? The rebirth stuff that can all go, but like hundred bullet stays, fable stays, uh, sweet scalp. tooth and scalp stays. Yeah. Now you're now I'm wanting to sell stuff, so we'll see if I can. Make Literally, that it, it, like whatnot. I'm gonna be selling a bunch of comic books. I want to do omnis and stuff. I don't know if there's an audience for it, and I don't want to be like, oh, here's an omni. Oh, it went for twenty bucks. Shit, you know. Uh, it's you can literally. Try like it's literally turning into. I want to just turn these things into like like key issues. Like it's time to turn these things into like CGC keys and stuff like that. So, look at that. You already got a sale here. There you are. Hit me up. I burn. Hit me up. Yeah. Uh, Matrix Gabe on Instagram. We could talk. Omni friend. Snake Eyes looks like a Fast and the Furious movie. That's pretty accurate. I'm fine with that. It's just the fact that he talks. All right. Because uh, in the that was the thing about Snake Eyes is he doesn't talk. And the history of, of Snake Eyes is he grew up as a ninja being trained since he was a child, not like some 30-year-old dude. Exactly. And, and some people like, might say... And he's, oh, a white, and he's a white guy, which is really weird, but yeah. <laughs> and people will say like, oh, but, you know, it's Snake Eyes. I'm like, yeah, but would you want that for your favorite character to have his thing shaken up for a movie? I don't know. 
if you want cool Snake Eye stuff, watch G.I. Joe Resolute. I've talked about it on the show a hundred times. It's written by Warren Ellis. It has, uh, yeah. yeah, it's the greatest G.I. Joe that I've ever seen. It has the best Snake Eyes Storm Shadow fight ever. It is, ex it is epic. It is out of control. It's the biggest, largest, just best ninja fight between Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes you'll ever see. Yeah, that's still only through DVD, right? It's not streaming anywhere. I think it's streaming on uh, what's that one weird like YouTube ripoff site? Um, I'm sorry, find it. No, um, Vin uh, Vinimo or something? Venmo? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Vimeo? <laughs> Venmo's the money app. Um, oh, uh, Daily Motion. Daily Motion. Wow. Daily Motion. It's, a, it's uh, like an hour, like an hour the, long, and it's the best hour you're going to spend. You can get the I'm put it for like five bucks. So I'm going to put it in the chat. Yeah. This thing, you are welcome. Like the fight scene between Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow is absolutely worth it. There you go, kids. You learned about the Fry Girl and G.I. Joe today. There's a man, we're educating people today on this show. Fry Girl, G.I. Joe, uh, conventions. Yep, Barnacle uh, knows what's up. Yep, we got the G.I. Joe. Is that, is that Fireflies? That's that's his name? I'm, I'm not too knowledgeable. Uh, I wanted to say Beachcomber. No, wait, Beachcomber's a Transformer. Beachhead. Oh, I think this is the new Mesco because I shared it on our chat. I just don't know the name of it. I think it's Firefly or something like that. Barnacle, correct me if I'm wrong. I probably am or not. I don't know. Maybe it's I'm Barnacle and we're just being stupid. <laughs> I'm not a huge G.I. Joe fan, sorry. I loved G.I. Joe as a kid growing up, but it's one of those shows where there's just so many characters that I just kind of grew up and forgot about. Firefly. Yay, Firefly. You're right. Good job, dude. I actually did order the new, they're, they're reprinting the complete G.I. Joe DVD box set uh, on Amazon. So that just got reprinted. I just bought that or pre ordered it or whatever. I just know that the Baroness is there and she's pretty awesome. And that's my favorite character for obvious. Baroness reasons. is great. There's that cover that Art Adams did of Baroness, is, which is absolutely beautiful and amazing. But she's also the same chick on uh, what's that Ryan Reynolds movie? Nice guy, where he's like in the video game. Uh, free free guy, something like that. Yeah. Free guy, something fall guy, whatever. That's the same. That's the same actress. Free guy, yeah. And those other GI Joe movies, even though they're dorky and weird, they're fun. They're fun. They're just goofy and don't make sense, but they're fun. Nice. The GI Joe movie, though, the animated movie. As the greatest opening scene ever. It makes you proud to be an American. It's like the most just USA, USA opening ever. It's just like this big fight around the Statue <laughs> of Liberty, with fireworks going off and the flag flying everywhere. It's crazy and awesome. Nice. Uh, yeah, Cleveland Brown knows what's up. Yeah, we, I think we were talking about the same thing. Yeah, that G.I. Joe movie is amazing. So speaking of amazing, why don't we show the fabulous people what's coming out? Let's do it. Previews. Let's get some previews. Let me on. let me uh, share DC because uh, it's real quick. They don't have a lot these days. All right, let's do DC. Uh, well, you get the previews. So literally, we we're getting uh, from DC Comics. We're getting Bizarro Comics, the Deluxe Edition. Uh, this is written by a bunch of people. And including uh, Matt Groening and a bunch of other acclaimed creators that you see here. Uh, Kyle Baker, Jeff Smith, Paul Pope, Hunt Emerson, uh, Dave Cooper, Eddie Campbell, Tony Millionaire, uh, Peter uh, something something, and James something something. So yeah, for 50 bucks, you get the Bizarro Comics Deluxe Edition with that sweet uh, cover. I love this one. Yeah, with the bubbles that are square. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll how cool is that? How's that's it. perfect for Bizarro? Uh, Joel Jones is getting a DC poster portfolio book. That's going to be super sexy. I can't wait to see that. Uh, 
uh, we're also getting uh, this thing, which is a YA novel. I am not Starfire. Uh, as a cool premise, basically, this is an alternate universe uh, where she is Starfire's daughter, I think. The daughter of the su super famous superhero Starfire, 17 year old Mandy. So, obviously, they're not alike. Uh, sounds interesting. And the creative team is awesome. I'm a huge fan of Mariko Tamaki. So, kind of want to check it out. Uh, what else is here? It's not a collected edition, but I just wanted to highlight that Icon and Rocket are back. Season one, first issue, Milestone Returns. Everybody should read that. Oh, that Icon. I was like, who's Icon? Yeah. Um, although I will say, if you watched uh, Young Justice, you would recognize Icon because he came back for that before the comics returned. So, was he in uh, Young Justice? Yeah, he showed up in uh, at this uh, either at the end of season one or at the start of season two. Dude, Young Justice is amazing. I I didn't see the new one when it we, when it came on uh, Netflix. Uh, no, on uh, HBO. The DC. The D yeah, it was first that, that DC app that, that lasted and then like it six moved months. To HBO. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I do, I do want to check that out. Uh, what else? There's not a whole lot, like I said. These are all just single issues. <laughs> Good old DC. Uh, you got Suicide Squad Case Files Volume 2, which is uh, best of trade paperback. And and uh, for the movie release, <laughs> and it has a movie cover. If you're into that sort of thing, although this is pretty cool for a movie cover, it's not the actors; it's a drawing painting. I like that. Uh, Trial by fire, and I uh, think that's it. Uh, yeah, that's all it is for uh, DC. So again, uh, the two Suicide Squad trade paper bags. The YA novel and uh, where is this damn thing? Uh, Bizarro, which will be a deluxe edition, so it will be oversized. That uh, that poster portfolio is pretty cool with Joel Jones's work. Oh yeah, that also looks amazing. Twelve inches, six twelve by sixteen. Uh, the pages of the poster portfolio are easily removed from the binding and are suitable for framing. Barnes and Noble had the Batman Max hardcover. It was super trippy. Yeah, uh, Sam Keith was at Torpedo while he was putting that book out. Uh, he's awesome. He's a fucking. He's like an artist, artist genius. It's like he kind of wears like the same clothes <laughs> every day. Like he's really kind of a meek. Uh, for somebody who draws like these really crazy, big, buffed out like dudes, he is super meek and incredibly kind and humble. Uh, and uh, he likes to just sit at home and watch porn. Is what he told me. Uh, so if, you, if, you're, if you're ever like, where's why? Why did it take so long for Batman Max to get released? Uh, porn. Yep. <laughs> uh, we have 143 people watching and only 83 entries. Let's see if we can get up to uh, 90 before we uh, do the giveaway. How thin is that max? It doesn't look like many issues. Uh, Sazmorth, uh, yeah, I, I have that milkshake video, and I was voted out to put that on to the show. Wait, the milkshake? <laughs> you, you talk about the, the... I talk about the fry girl with the milkshake video that I showed oh, you. I, 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 I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to tempt uh, YouTube. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> I know. I'll leave it alone. It's a little bit... I mean, they're not showing anything, but it's kind of graphic compared to the fries. It's awesome. Uh, next, Imaginot. Any confirmation on whether the Usagi Ojimbo box set reprint is actually dropping tomorrow? OPB has uh, it listed for 728 as its release for months. Or Fanta nor CGN have corroborated. Uh, I'll. Look is it, it is it going through Diamond? I could look it up if it's in Diamond. I, I yeah, have no idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nick Munoz, I was told there was free stuff. You just got to type IST gift card and you're in the Nick. Money. I haven't seen Nick in a while. 
He was Happy to see him. He was he joined my stream uh last night. That's I great. Was playing dude. some uh Pokemon Unite for my channel. Are you guys going in on the Marvel Legends Galactus figure? I'm not. I was Jesse. super tempted, dude. My wife even gave me the thumbs up. She was like, "Yeah, go for it." And I was like, "I I don't think you mean that." Like, yeah, I, it's it's too much. I I mean, it's going to get funded. Right now it's sitting at 9,022 backers out of 14,000 with 35 days remaining. And they already revealed one of the the uh, uh, tiers or extras, I guess. It's, yeah, I mean, they did a tease with, of it. Yeah. Yeah. Two. Let me share it real quick. That could be like a little segment this week on the Haslab Galactus. Dude, it, four hundred bucks, bro. I'd be in it if it was like like sideshow and I can make payments on it. I'd yeah. be in it in a heartbeat. But Let's throw four hundred. In 35 days, right off the bat. Totally yeah, cheap. and then it's going to take like a year to get it, if not longer. Like, oh, but it's so cool. That's 100% Ghost Rider and 100%, oh, not Ghost Rider, excuse me, uh, Silver Surfer and Silver Surfer. Uh, and Nova. And Nova, yes. I'm pretty sure this Silver Surfer is going to be a repaint. Probably, I think it'll probably look, you know, it'd be cool if they did the uh, dance lot, uh, like, um, yeah. Oh my gosh, the artist. I forgot his name. Um, Mike Allred. Allred, thank you. If it's in that style, a little cell shaded cartoony, that'd be really cool. Yeah. I doubt not do that. But. If it was the Seeker, uh, oh, Silver Surfer, where he had like the, the Shaw and the Cape and mm -hmm. he had like the Nega Bands, I'd be in. That, that'd be dope too. And you see the effect piece on his fist? They've yeah. used that so much. It's on everything. It's on the two Silver Surfers that are already out. That one and the black uh, Silver Surfer with Thor's hammer. Yeah, that's yep. it, it, it's it's been there already. I have that on my Adam Warlock figure, and I bought that ages ago. Yeah, the collector Sentinel got backed in two days. It's just there's more X Men fans than there are. Yeah, Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four is a harder sell. Yeah, until that movie comes out, nobody cares about Fantastic Four. Nobody. Nobody but me cares about Fantastic Four until that I movie care. comes out. Oh yeah, okay. Me and Geo, and Geo also loves Inhumans. Uh, yeah. But nobody cares. That's why it's just still not all the way backed. Yeah. Compared I think to... it's gonna get backed at the end of the of the limit, like a few days before closing. Yeah. Because uh, BBTS and like the big toy stores haven't put in their orders yet. When you see that thing jump like like five thousand orders in like a day or two, that's that's when it's gonna hit because that's another the big box stores put their orders in. What if it's silver surfer black? That'd be they cool. Be, but they, they already have, have a black one. Yeah. They already have one. They had the obsidian uh, silver surfer. I, granted it's not the same thing, I get it, but you know. Oh, Oxmeet Pete, he cares. Thank you, Ox Oxmeet Pete. I'm glad somebody else cares. Mystic Lion, why you gotta Ouch. Do that to me. Come on. Do you want to win that gift card? <laughs> uh, the FF show from the 90s was pretty good. Shame it's forgotten. I, I think the best Fantastic Four thing ever is the uh, early odds show. Do you remember that one, Gabe? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brian Austin good. Green doing a really terrible rap in it. Yeah. Uh, I have oh, no, you're talking about the one where, uh, where uh, the thing has the, the four spray painted on him. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about now. Let me, let me go look for it. Give me a second. Can you do the start the previews while I look for it? Yeah. I want to show yeah. the people because it's yeah. a sweet box set. <laughs> it's dope. I have it too. I just It's all boxed up still. All my DVDs are still boxed up. And I'm just talking to myself. I'm mean, not to myself, but, you know, I got all you guys. All right, so uh, previews. Give me a second. Let's get previews. Yeah, Oxmeet Pete's gonna be eight hundred bucks or more on uh, on uh, I. Uh, no, I see. I did the same thing you did. Damn it, you threw me off. BBTS. I know, but it's four hundred bucks is still four hundred bucks, dude. I can get a really nice like CGC book with that, probably. All right. Uh, here we go. This week's releases. Here's where we do the second ad for in stock trades. I always like to do it right when we get into. What's coming out this week because that's what this is all about showing you guys what's coming out this week 
you hit up in stock trades, you get up to 50% off on all your omnibuses, collected editions, trade paperbacks, hard covers, all that great, awesome collected edition stuff. If you're paying cover price for your books, today's the day that you stop and you start saving money by going to instocktrades.com. Wonderful packaging. They've been in business for like 12 plus years, not longer for IST. I know that their parent company, uh, DCBS, has been around for close to 20, if not more, because I've been shopping with them for like 15, 16 years. You get the best packaging. Seriously, the packaging, keep it. Keep the box, keep the uh, uh, the little molded uh, stuffing that's inside of it. Perfect if you ever sell stuff or if you need to pack something up if you move. Awesome that. Uh, in stock trades, also it's giving us a $50 gift card to give out to one lucky winner today, live on the show, towards the end of the show, where all you have to do is put hashtag IST gift card in the chat. You'll get entered into that raffle, and we'll have the cool little spinoff for that towards the end of the show. So thank you to In Stock Trades for sponsoring us for the last like four plus years. They are definitely our number one first go-to online retailer for all of our collected additions so hit them up cool you back geo i kind of hear you yeah i'm here all right you got that awesome box set yeah i'll show it after we're done with previews cool all right so let's start all right i got to go to category i haven't even looked at this stuff yet today so this is gonna be all a surprise for me as well so graphic novels this week starting with image comics uh rain like hammers which is a uh oh god what's his name who does this book i gotta click on it i forgot his name uh, Brandon Graham. I love Brandon Graham. I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Uh, he did the, the Preacher book, or not Preacher, he did the New Prophet book from Image Comics a couple years back. Uh, all of it, he got this really cool graffiti indie art style to him, as you can see here on his cover. Great stuff, really wild ideas. I love his work, so that's gonna be a cool one to check out. And that's it for Image. Wow. <laughs> uh, Dark Horse, Avatar, Last Airbender, uh, Airbender, uh, Suki, Alone, trade paperback, uh, Heart in a Box, trade paperback. That was a Nirvana song, wasn't it? Oh, that's Heart Shaped Box. Heart Shaped Box. Yeah. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies, uh, Raptor Limited Edition hardcover by Dave McKean. That looks cool. It's limited edition, guys. You better go. Uh -oh. Oh, this is always cool. Shaolin Cowboy. Stark uh, Trek. Stark, Stark, Stark Trek. Trade, oh, it's a trade paperback. I like the hardcovers for these. Uh, this is Jeff Darrow doing Jeff Darrow. Just crazy, crazy, detailed, massive landscapes. Beautiful rendering. I love everything Jeff Darrow does. There's usually not a lot of dialogue in here. You're in it for the art. And it's all storytelling, very little dialogue. But you just, it's one of those books where you can look at this big mountain of, of skeletons, come back a week later, and go, oh, I didn't realize that was holding a gun. Oh, there's another gun. It's always something new when you look at, at his artwork. It's so, so detailed. I love Jeff Darrell. Uh, what else? IDW. Oh, there's that Batman Max Arkham Dreams uh, people were asking about. Really cool, crazy stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of watching porno involved in this. Uh, Jekyll Island Chronicles. No idea what that is. Uh, DC, we'll get into that after all. Of, oh, we just did DC stuff. So we you guys can yep. look through all that. Image, or image, excuse me. Marvel. Let me slow down here a little bit. I'm getting a little excited. Captain America Omnibus Hardcover Volume 3 is coming out this week. You're getting two awesome. covers for that. Yep. Awesome John Basima cover here. And the uh, this newer modern looking cover uh, by Coelho. Coelho. Uh, I would one hundred percent cool. get the John. Uh, I would get yeah. Cover. I would get the the DM cover, but the regular one's cool. I like it. Uh, somebody was asking earlier today about Epic Collections and uh, Conan. So you have Conan Epic Collection here. Uh, this is uh, probably like Volume Two. It collects issues twenty seven through forty two. Awesome, good stuff there. Oh, look at this, Geo. Fantastic Four Heroes Return Complete Collection Volume 3. I need to nice. get this. I have these issues. 
This is some of my favorite Fantastic Four stuff. This is like when I was really getting into Fantastic Four after that Heroes Were Born stuff. I was into Fantastic Four a little bit before that with the uh, uh, with the uh, Paul Ryan stuff. Uh, and I was getting into that then, but this is the stuff that really, really hooked me. This is a lot of great stuff here. This is the Chris Claremont era. Oh, uh, John Francis Moore, Salvador La Roca. There we go. It even has the second Inhuman series, the the second limited series, which was four uh, issues. That's when they go to space for the first time, if I remember correctly, to the moon and all that stuff. Yeah, that's great. That's that's going on the list. I'm getting that, if anything. Oh, uh, Fantastic Four Omnibus uh, Volume 2, uh, the Jack Kirby cover, and a reprint of the... Uh, Laderon cover. From what I saw on the internet and Omar making a video, uh, they remastered the artwork with newly found uh, artwork and all that stuff. So it's redone. It looks fantastic. I would get it. This is also the new spine design, if anybody cares. And the spine thing. Yep. Uh, Giant Size X-Men Tribute, Lin Wynn Cockrum. What's this? Give me a second. I'll be right back. Oh, 36 of Marvel's top artists come together to recreate this epic story, each drawing one pulse-pounding page in a tribute to Marvel's master masterpiece. That's interesting. Cool. Interesting. Uh, not sure how I if I'm really interested in it, but it's an interesting concept and idea that you'll get 36 different artists to redraw Giant Size Extra number one. But cool. Uh, King and Black Avengers trade paperback, but that says Alanis Attacks. Ooh, Gwenham versus Carnage, King and Black. That's going to be awesome. And King and Black uh, Thunderbolts. A lot of King of Black stuff coming in this week. Uh, Reign of X trade paperback, volume two. With no picture, thank you, previous, so we can get an idea of what that looks like. But there's some more, that's some X Men fun stuff there. Boom Studios. Oh, here you go, Buffy Vampire Slayer fans. Buffy Vampire Slayer, Tree Paper Rag Volume 6. And uh, here's kind of the uh, ancillary, off the cuff, back half of previews it's referred to. Lots of cool stuff in here, usually. We'll scroll through here and see if anything that we get. That kind of pops out a lot of manga, a lot of fun kind of kids' books, super indie stuff is in here. Ooh, Art of Aspen Comics. Let me take a look at this. This is a San Diego 2015 San Diego Comic Con edition of only 500. This is volume two. That is neat. Can't go wrong with Michael Turner. Joe Bennett, Andy Parks, all kinds of great stuff in there. That's cool. And volume three. Volume two, volume three. Something called Bad Boys Happy Home. Oh, look at the little doggy. Big Nate, top dog. What's up, buddy? He's so cute. The little cone head. Uh, that looks like the Fry Girl. It's called Booty Royal. Interesting. Blue Giant looks pretty neat. This is some fun manga stuff here. Gio's not here to kind of, he would totally be able to explain all of this stuff to you guys. Call Girl in Another World. I'm sure that's wholesome. I'm back. Sorry. Uh Cool. We're passing up all the, all the manga stuff here, Gio. Yeah. Uh, it's this Tune in. If you guys are interested in the manga stuff, tune in Thursday. We'll do the July previews, and we're going to go over all the stuff that's coming out. Got peanuts. Complete Peanuts. That's awesome. From yeah. 1979 to 1980. Oh, I was just talking about Dark Green Duck. Here's, what is this? Is this the original? Oh, this is the original uh, cartoon uh, of the Disney Adventures stuff. This is the original 90s, 80s, 80s, 90s stuff here. 
That's neat. Uh, how do I enter the IST giveaway? Just type uh, hashtag IST gift card and you're in the running. Gotta be quick because we're gonna do that now in a few minutes. A lot of Dogman books. Wow, Dogman's really popular, whoever that is. Yep. Lady Death Rules. Lucy in the Sky. No, no. Interesting, interesting books. Phantom. I really want to be. I love the character Phantom for some reason. Like, I really love the cartoon Phantom 20. I just. I've never gone around to get into the Hermes stuff to get these. Uh, these are the uh, newsprints or the news, uh, news strips. Oh, Rent a Girlfriend. I love that series. It's fun. I live in Vegas. There's a lot of places here to rent a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, Terry Moore. I follow the Terry Moore fans. Uh, cereal, Glass Bomb, or Glass Tomb nice. coming out. Smurfs. Smurfs, wow. Ooh. Oh, speaking of, to your eternity, I spoke about that earlier. It's nice. one of my favorite ongoing manga right now. All right, and that is that for previews. All right, so we're going to do the gift card drawing. All right, 154 Thank people watching right now. So, Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're still getting comments. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And remember, just do it once because it seems to take you out if you spam it. Yeah. So. All right. 99 entries. All right. See if we can get to 100 real quick before I press the button. <laughs> Again, I'm going to hit draw, and it's going to go over everybody that entered. I have no control of what happens. And the winner, you write to our email, uh, the email, omnibroslive at gmail.com. You're going to give us your the your full name and the uh, email that you use to log in to in stock trades. We'll get that sorted out and hook you up with the gift card. All right. And uh, hey, everybody, you can follow me on whatnot now as Ninja Comics. I was able to get all my sales through and I just rebranded myself. Ninja Comics. So hit me up on whatnot. Right. I'll be selling comics. And uh, I want to get rid of these zombies. So let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. That's right. All right. Rock and roll. Let's do it. Uh, All right. 100 Good entries. Luck. Ooh, God. We made it to triple digits. I like it. All right. Let's do it. <clears throat> Good luck, everybody. Uh oh, here we're spinning through some names. Spin, spin, spin. It's anybody's game. Anybody's game. If you, don't, if you didn't enter, you don't get a chance to win. That was your chance. Yep. That was your chance, everybody. Don B. Don B. All right, bud. If you're still watching, or if you're watching on the repeat, Don B. Just Don B. This is going out to Don B. Everybody else, shut up. <laughs> I don't want a bunch of emails from random people just sending in emails. Hey, I'm Don, Don B. B. Yeah, I'm Don B. Uh, OmniBrosLive at gmail.com. Email us there, sir, uh, with your InStockTrades.com uh, account. Email account, not your password, any of that nonsense. I'm not asking for that. Just what your email is so we can get that gift card added to your account. Congratulations, Don B. Oh, he's here. There he is. Yay. Thank you. All right, bro. Yeah, send Don. us that email with your IST account. Uh, email, just email, like whatever email you used, uh, and we'll get that set up for you. Just give us a couple of days. Uh, IST gets a little busy uh, around this time in the week. Uh, and you'll get yourself a nice $50 gift card. Spend it wisely or not. Just blow it on some gibberish stuff if you want to. Get a Do bunch of fun. manga, man. Yeah. That's my suggestion. <laughs> get Dick guy. Fight Island. Get $50 worth of Dick Fight Island. I don't know what is that maybe like six copies? Make it happen. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Free shipping. All right, Gio, that was awesome. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you again for showing up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Give us that thumbs up. Uh, leave us a comment. Share this video with all your friends. Help us kind of spread the word of uh, not only Omni Bros Live, 
but the community of collecting omnibuses and oh, that's right, the Fantastic Four box set. Talk about it, Gio. Yeah, real quick. Uh, this is an amazing series. It only lasted 26 episodes, and it got the dynamic pretty freaking well. It did an awesome world building. Uh, you really fall in love with this family, and uh, it, they cover a bunch of classic storylines. Uh, the redesigns for the costumes and the villains, all great. You even get some cameos like She-Hulk, Spider-Man. I think Iron Man shows up or somebody, but it, it's it's really fun. So here's the whole thing. You can still get it for like less than 20 bucks. Um, yeah. It even comes with a little comic book reprint of Ultimate Fantastic Four, which, uh, yeah, I could see the inspiration for this. It's a younger uh, family here, but it's fun. I do wholeheartedly recommend uh, this. It is World's Greatest Heroes, The Complete Season. Yeah. It's on Disney Plus as well. Yeah, you can stream it on Disney Plus. That's true. Uh, I, n nothing I found on Diamond about the Usagi Jimbo box. I don't know if it's being distributed through Diamond or not then. Um, if it wasn't on uh, the list that we showed today, we is that's the only thing we can really go off of. So sorry. Herbie makes an appearance, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So yeah, uh, as for myself, uh, you can find me on my channel on anime, comics, and manga, and I also do live streams, hanging out with everybody, playing some games, all that fun stuff. That's a week in geekdom here on YouTube. All right, yeah, and everybody, you find me Matrix Gabe on uh, Instagram. If you want to hit me up about buying some of these Omnis behind me, hit me up. And then also, if you want to buy some comics, key issues, variants, '90s goodness, uh, what whatnot, which is the uh, selling app, you can find me on there as Ninja Comics because ninjas make everything better. Am right. Yeah, yeah. Lazy bomb. Nope. Rob Liefeld's in my like on my uh, my Mount Rushmore of '90s artists for sure. But Stephen Platt is probably my favorite from them. It's hard to say. It's really hard. It's really picking splitting hairs. You know, Joe Mad, Jim Lee, Stephen Platt. Ugh, it's hard to decide. All right. So, Jill. I think that's it, everybody. Thank you again, everybody. We'll see you Thursday? Thursday, Thursday manga stream with a couple guests. All right, everybody. That is awesome. Everybody, manga stream on uh, Thursday with Manga Bros. And I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their week. <laughs> Adios, turn nuggets. <laughs>